And hello there. I'm Funky Monkey, and welcome to another edition of Funky Monkey at the Movies. With me as ever is my nameless producer. Hello. It's very brisk. Very brisk. And tonight, we've been to see Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And I came into this expecting to have a new champion, but I don't know that I... it is. Oh yes, it's good. It's definitely a good movie. Very much entertaining. But it's only a PG, so it's not very brutal. But it is very flippy and Spider-Man-y. Is something not being brutal such a bad thing, though? No, no. Films that aren't especially brutal are quite good. They're actually a very good thing. There probably should be more films that aren't brutal. There should be a few more family films. Of course, not everything needs to be family-oriented. I yeah. mean, after Deadpool, R-rated films, 15 and 18-rated films in the UK, were starting to make a comeback. Yeah, the K- well, I don't think they ever went away. It's no. just that with those are kind of the first superhero we want. Okay, yeah, so where were we? Yes, Spider-Man, Into the Spider-Verse. And... Yeah. It was fun, it was exciting, it was flippy, it was action it was Spider-Man-y. Nicolas Cage finally found a superhero film he didn't suck in. Well, he was only a voice actor. Yeah. And I suppose for the first time I was actually interested in anything to do with Miles Morales. Yeah, let's not go down that rabbit hole. Oh no, I just like... There's already a Peter Parker. Or oh, there's already a Spider-Man who's Peter Parker. You don't really need to be somebody else. There didn't need to be other people who were the Flash, but that was the way it was. Yeah, I suppose. Back to the movie. Yeah, I thought the graphics were quite good. It made some bold choices, which I don't know if they all worked. I mean, it was quite good with how they did all the um, flips and Spider-Man animations and things. Oh yeah, definitely. Which I know a lot of people complained about in some of the earlier Spider-Man films. Yep, that they did. Which I didn't mind really, considering like when it was. And, but yeah, it worked okay. But I don't know if. The way it kept switching between like some cartoon things and back to the 3D was a bit jarring for me. Yeah, well, it is a bit ADHD, if you'll pardon the uh, Buffy speak. It is very hyperactive visuals. Yeah. But, you know, that's what the kids, they like these days. Well, yeah, I was going to say, like, with some of the music and the graphics, how, how they were, like, the colours and things... It seems to be like quite for the kids, down with the kids kind of thing. I kind of felt that three of the spiders had all the attention when there were six of them. So there were three that didn't really get explored as much as they could have been. What, like Penny, Noir and Spider-Ham? Yeah. Uh, well, what really can you do with Peter Pork and the sensational Spider-Ham? He's a cartoon pig. What can't you do with a cartoon pig? Mmm, indeed. There wasn't really a main protagonist, really. There was just... Yeah. or antagonist, rather. There well, there really was a main, main antagonist, really, well, a kingpin. He wasn't that good. Mm, he was a little uh, overly henched, henchified for a kingpin. Yeah, I mean, they did kind of overdo that a little bit. The way that he was going, oh, Spider-Man could never beat me, or Spider-Man could beat him because... Spider-Man's got superhuman strength and the Kingpin hasn't. He just has, like, sumo wrestler strength. Yeah. Spider-Man was always holding back. I mean, yeah. if the Kingpin had ever fought black suit Spider-Man unrestrained, then maybe things would have been different. That kind of did happen. In uh, There was that one story where his arm A got shot and then he just kind of, like, beat the crap out of Kingpin. Whoa! And if you'd like to read that story yourself, Back in Black is the title to search for. I don't know which flavour of Spider-Man comic it was, but it's certainly one of them. Anyway, back to the review. Well, you know, that's all a thing. Yeah. But, like, of course he didn't kill the Kingpin. Nope. 
Yeah. Can't be killing the pink kingpin. No. No killing the kingpin, no killing of doom. I'm sure his uncle in that wasn't who the prowler is. I'm pretty sure the prowler, or the normal prowler, I suppose, because it's a multiverse thing. Mm-hmm. The normal prowler, I think, is Hobie Brown, who in another another multiverse dimension is Spider Punk. Oh. But I could be wrong about that. I suppose they had to try and keep it equal. Otherwise, they could have had like Mangus Spider Man. Mangus with, Spidey? Yeah, with his giant robot. I mean, giant robot, not regular tiny robot like Penny. Yeah. But yeah, it was pretty good. It wasn't amazing though. Yeah. But it was. Because I want to say something good about it, because uh-huh. it deserves to have something good said about it. I suppose it was a good, like, um, coming of age slash origin story for Miles Morales Spider Man. Yep. And if there is to be, like, a future of Miles Morales in cinematic Spider Man. Well, I wonder if possibly. I mean, I don't, I don't know the ins and outs of the Sony Marvel deal, but. I wonder if they'll push more towards having Miles as the Sony Spider-Man and kind of push Peter back towards being the Marvel Spider-Man. The MCU Spider-Man. Yeah. They could do that. One thing's for sure, though. Uh-huh. I'm definitely not going to go and see Silver and Black. Definitely not? Definitely not. Why not? It's, it's, it's a ridiculous idea. Well, yeah, it is a little bit. I mean, well, they did Venom okay with that Spider-Man, though, didn't they? It turned out pretty well. It did turn out pretty well. I mean, it was ridiculous and crazy. And I might pick it up in the new year. I mean, is there any bits about this film we're rather lucky? Really? Uh, well, it had good visuals, uh-huh. good music, uh-huh. good voice acting, yeah. good I, bit of Nicolas Cage. I never really imagined... The Kingpin as being so New York, though. I don't know, maybe it was something from when I used to see him in the um, the old Spider-Man cartoons. But yeah, yeah so like, we always saw the Kingpin as more of a refined gentleman than sort of a New Yorker punk made good. Yeah. And really, we could probably talk about that. Okay. Because... He wants to blame Spider-Man. He wanted to blame Spider-Man for all for uh, the craziness that affected his family. Uh-huh. But really, it he is to blame. Fault. Yeah, he is to blame. He is the architect of his own downfall because if he hadn't been brawling Spider-Man inside of his home, exactly, they wouldn't have run off in shock and fear. Yeah, exactly. So, in conclusion. It's worth a watch, but nothing amazing. I want to say that it's more than a forgettable kiddie quieter, but... Yeah. I wonder if it really was worth a full cinematic release. I mean, people online have been raving about this movie. Yeah? Yeah. What have they been saying? Well, they've been saying that we should go and see it. And we have gone and seen it. That's not exactly what I'd call raving, but hey-ho. Okay, scores then. I'm going to give it a six, because it was a good middle of the road. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try and be kind. I'm going to go for six and a half. Yeah? Yeah. I suppose that's okay. And the all-important ladder. Yeah. So, if I remember correctly, I'm going to go with The Incredibles 2, Avengers, Deadpool 2, probably Venom, Ant-Man and the Wasp, then Spider-Man, and then Black Panther at the bottom. I'm going for Ant-Man and the Wasp, Incredibles 2. Uh Uh-huh. Deadpool 2, uh-huh. Venom, uh-huh. oh no, Black Panther, then Venom, uh-huh. Into the Spider-Verse, uh-huh. and then poor old Infinity War at the bottom, because it was only half a movie, 
and the second half, Avengers Endgame, has just been announced. Uh, right, so this has been Funky Monkey and his nameless producer. Yes. Links in the description. Check out the Minds channel. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you at the movies. Bye.